Welcome to The Deep Dive. We're the show that, you know, takes those crucial sources and helps you get informed fast. And today, wow, we're diving into something huge. Something that's felt like it's just over the horizon for ages, but maybe, just maybe, is finally getting real. We're talking about the possibility of a permanent therapy for HIV. We've been digging into this article. It's called Permanent HIV Therapy in 2026, Breakthroughs and Future of Care. And our source here is the HIV RNA Test Guide podcast. They mentioned they're a trusted source for HIV testing, uh, apparently with over 4,500 labs across the U.S. So our mission, what we want to do here, is really explore these, these scientific leaps that could genuinely change HIV care forever. We need to understand the difference between like different kinds of cures, right? And also figure out why early detection, specifically using HIV RNA tests, seems more important now than, well, ever. Think about it, for 40 years, HIV has been managed. Kept under control, yes, but not really beaten. Always that shadow of lifelong medication. But what if that's changing? What if 2026 is maybe not the year, but a year that dream gets tangibly closer? Okay, let's uh, let's unpack this. So for, yeah, over four decades now, daily antiretroviral therapy, ART, it's been incredible, truly revolutionary. It turned HIV from you know, what was often a death sentence into something chronic, something manageable. Millions living long lives. Absolutely. Yeah. It's hard to overstate the impact RT has had. But that idea, that dream of a permanent therapy, something that means no more daily pills for life, that always felt, I don't know, almost like science fiction. It did. For a long time, it seemed incredibly distant. But what's shifting, and this is what feels so different now, is these really cutting edge technologies. Gene therapies, immune-based vaccines, even these long-acting injections, they're making it seem possible soon. Yeah, they're bringing that dream much closer to, uh, to actual reality. It's a fundamental shift in the landscape. Okay, so when we talk about permanent HIV therapy, what do researchers actually mean? Because words like cure can be loaded. That's a really crucial point. It's important to be precise here. Generally, in the research context right now, it doesn't always mean totally wiping out every single virus particle. Not yet, anyway. There are basically two main goals people are working towards. First, there's what's called a functional cure. Okay. This means the virus might still be present, maybe in tiny amounts, but it's suppressed, undetectable. And crucially, it's untransmittable, all without needing daily pills. So you could stop RT, stay healthy, and not pass it on. Exactly. Long-term revision, essentially. Then you have the sort of holy grail, a sterilizing cure. Right. That sounds like complete eradication. It is. That's eliminating the virus entirely. Mm -hmm. Every last bit, including those hidden viral reservoirs we need to talk about. But honestly, most of the big breakthroughs we're seeing right now, the ones targeting that 2026 time frame, they're aiming for the functional cure. Got it. Freeing people from the daily medication burden. Precisely. Even if some viral traces remain hidden away. That distinction really helps manage expectations, but it raises the question, if we're getting close now, why has HIV been so uniquely difficult? Such a tough nut to crack for all these years. Ah, uh, yeah, that gets right to the heart of it. HIV is a retrovirus. Okay, and what does that mean in practice? It means it has this, this sneaky ability to weave its own genetic code right into the DNA of our immune cells, specifically our CD4 plus T cells. The key immune, well, the generals, you could say. Exactly. The ones coordinating the whole defense. HIV targets them, weakens them. And once its genetic material is in our DNA, it's basically part of the cell's instruction manual. Wow. So it's not just floating around, it's embedded. Deeply embedded. Hmm. And even worse, it sets up shop in these hidden spots called viral reservoirs. Where art can't really get to. Right. Places like the brain, lymph nodes, the gut. ART suppresses the virus in the bloodstream incredibly well, making the viral load undetectable. But it can't fully clear out these reservoirs. The virus lies dormant there, hiding. So if you stop RT, It can roar back. It rebounds from these hidden locations. That's the central challenge. How do you find and destroy, or at least permanently silence, these hidden reservoirs? Okay. That makes sense. It's a formidable challenge. So given that, what are these leading therapies? The ones making 2026 look like a potential turning point? What's actually cracking this code? Well, the progress is, uh, it's genuinely exciting. One of the front runners getting a lot of attention is AGT-103T. It's from American Gene Technologies. Gene therapy, right. Exactly. What they do is take a patient's own CD4 plus T cells, modify them in the lab to make them resistant to HIV infection, and then infuse them back into the patient. So you're basically giving the immune system an upgrade, a permanent shield. That's a good way to put it. And the clinical progress is quite advanced. It's in late stage trials. Results presented at the IES 2025 conference were, well, pretty stunning. 
participants actually stopped their daily art. Stopped completely? Yes, and some stayed virally suppressed, undetectable, for 12 months or even longer without medication. And side effects? Crucially, no serious side effects reported in those trials. It really seems to be the therapy that's closest right now to achieving a functional cure in clinical practice. Stopping art for a year. That is huge. Seriously changes the game. Okay, and speaking of groundbreaking tools, we hear so much about CRISPR, the genetic scissors. How's that playing into this? Ah, CRISPR. Yes, it's a, it's a remarkably precise gene editing tool clustered, regularly interspaced, short palindromic repeats, if you want the full name. Let's stick with CRISPR. Good idea. So therapies like EBT-101 from Excision Biotherapeutics use CRISPR. What it does is it basically finds the HIV genetic code that's integrated into the cell's DNA. The embedded stuff we talked about. Exactly. And it cuts it out like microscopic scissors stipping out the viral DNA. Wow. And does it work? Initial human trials in 2025 showed uh, really impressive results, up to 95% removal of that integrated HIV DNA from the targeted cells. 95%? That's incredible. It is. Early results also suggested people could maintain viral suppression even after pausing art. And this was delivered via a single infusion. A single dose. A single infusion. Now, the source is careful to note it's not a sterilizing cure yet, but still, it's one of the most promising single-shot gene-based approaches we're seeing. A single infusion. That's just profound. Okay, let's connect this to something we're all kind of familiar with now, mRNA technology, thanks to recent events. How does mRNA fit into the HIV picture, mm -hmm. especially with therapeutic vaccines? Yeah, mRNA tech really burst into the public consciousness, didn't it? And just like it revolutionized COVID vaccines, it holds huge promise for HIV too, but mostly for therapeutic vaccines. So not preventing infection, but treating it. Exactly. Helping the immune system fight an existing infection better. A key example is ICVAX, developed in China, now expanding trials here in the U.S. It basically trains the immune system to better spot and destroy cells already infected with HIV. And are they seeing results? Yes. Participants in trials showed better viral control, stronger immune responses, even when they stopped their daily art. And beyond ICVAX, other companies are developing mRNA injectables designed to... Uh, essentially teach the body to make its own HIV neutralizing proteins or maybe activate specific immune pathways that have gone dormant. So maybe not as sure on its own, but part of a combo. That seems very likely. The real power might lie in using mRNA therapies together with, say, gene therapies to achieve really long-lasting control, like building the ultimate treatment toolkit. It really does feel like a whole new arsenal is being built. So with all these breakthroughs bubbling up, what's the feeling among the experts? People at the CDC, NIH, international labs. What are they saying about 2026? Are they optimistic? The word is definitely optimistic. More so than ever before, really. That's a noticeable shift. You hear leading HIV scientists expressing real hope. There's a quote from Dr. Anthony Watson at the CDC's Cure Research Division. He said something like, we're not decades away anymore. We're a few years from transforming how HIV is treated. A few years. That's a powerful statement. It is. But of course, they always add the crucial caveats, and rightly so. Like what? Well, long-term monitoring is absolutely vital. We need to be sure these effects last and are safe over many years. Also, it's pretty clear that not every therapy will work for every single person. HIV is complex. People's immune systems differ. Personalized medicine will likely be key. Makes sense. And then there's the huge issue of access and affordability. As these therapies get closer to approval, we have to figure out how to make them available to everyone who needs them equitably. The science is moving fast, but the distribution needs real planning. That's such a critical point. A breakthrough isn't really a breakthrough if it doesn't reach people, which leads to the question I bet many listeners have. How soon? How soon could someone realistically expect these therapies to be available, even maybe in a limited way? What's the timeline? OK, let's try and break that down realistically based on where things stand. For mm -hmm. AGT-103T, the gene therapy, given it's in late stage trials, the estimate is possibly late 2026, maybe early 2027. But that's pending FDA approval, which is a big step. Okay, so potentially quite soon for that one. Relatively, yes. Yeah. For EBD-101, the CRISPR therapy, it's expected to move into larger phase two trials during 2026. So strong progress, but still a few more hurdles before wider access. ICVX, the therapeutic vaccine, is seeing its U.S. trials expand in 2026. That shows growing confidence and investment. And for the broader category of mRNA therapies, human testing is really just expected to kick off in late 2026. 
So different timelines for different approaches. Exactly. None are on the pharmacy shelf for everyone tomorrow. But 2026 feels like a real transition year, moving from concepts and early studies into larger human trials and potentially the first approvals from theory to practice. That puts it in perspective. We're talking tangible possibilities in the next few years, not some distant dream anymore. Which, okay, brings us right back to you, the listener. Why does all this high-tech science matter right now, today? How does it connect to immediate health choices? It matters hugely. Because for many of these new therapies, timing is absolutely critical. How so? Many of them seem to work best, maybe only work effectively, if HIV is caught very early. Before it does major damage to the immune system, before it establishes those deep, widespread viral reservoirs that are so hard to clear out later. Ah, so early detection becomes even more vital. Exactly. And that's where HIV RNA testing comes in. It's a game changer for early detection. Because it finds the virus itself, not just the antibodies. Precisely. It detects the virus's genetic material directly. That means it can spot an infection as early as 7 to 10 days after someone's exposed. Wow, compared to weeks or months for older tests. Right. It's much more sensitive. Ideal for anyone who thinks they might have had a recent exposure or maybe a high-risk situation. And think about it. Knowing your status that early doesn't just help with current health and prevention. Mm -hmm. It could literally qualify you for clinical trials of these new therapies. So it could put you first in line for these potential cures. Or give you access to early access programs as they roll out. It puts you in the driver's seat in this new era of HIV treatment. It's about future options, too. That's incredibly powerful. It shifts the reason for testing, almost. So let's go back to the source article. What was the direct advice, the immediate call to action for listeners? Yeah, the article was very clear on this. The advice was basically, don't wait for symptoms, don't guess, straightforward. Right. And it points to a specific resource. Mm -hmm. It says, if you're in the U.S. and you want testing that's fast, confidential, and uses lab-accurate methods, you should visit HIVRNATestGuide.com. Apparently, they offer nationwide access to labs doing these early detection RNA tests. And the turnaround is quick. They say results typically come back within just one or two days. And it's confidential, affordable. That's presented as the practical, immediate step someone can take right now, given how fast things are moving. Okay, so let's try and wrap this up. Is a permanent HIV therapy available in 2026? The answer seems to be... It's closer than it's ever been, moving into clinical reality. Yes, but not quite a universal, off-the-shelf solution just yet. Right. Still hurdles, especially long-term data and that crucial issue of access for everyone. But the shift itself feels profound. Gene therapy, CRISPR, therapeutic vaccines. They're showing that long-term HIV control without daily pills isn't just a fantasy. It's becoming achievable. It really feels like the next few years could usher in a completely new era. Where managing HIV isn't necessarily about lifelong medication, but maybe about a journey towards sustained remission, a functional cure. And until those breakthroughs are fully here and widely available. Knowing your status, staying informed, getting tested early, especially with RNA tests, if you have concerns about recent exposure, that's your greatest power right now. Definitely. And maybe a final thought to leave you with. Mm -hmm. Just consider what it will actually mean for individuals, for society. When living with HIV might transition from requiring lifelong daily treatment to potentially achieving a functional cure, how could that change everything? Health, stigma, hope around the whole world. It's a massive transformation to contemplate. It really is a lot to think about. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive into what's next for HIV care. As always, keep exploring, stay curious. 